Hi guys and welcome back to the Watch Z. I'm your host Nanu. So it is official. The Kurds are getting 14%. You heard me right, 14%. There's a billion dinars being pumped in. So the news article read that the portion they're getting in the budget right now is 14%. So not 7, not 12, but 14%. That's crazy. So what happened? What changed? Hopefully the rate, or hopefully um, they know what the investors know. Um, that the Iraqi dinar is going to be reinstated and then revalued um, somewhere close to Kuwait so that the, the there'll be equality. As Trump said, a level playing field. Um, <laughs> there's a level playing field, it'll be one-to-one -one and it won't go that, that high, I don't know. But I'll take one-to-one. -one. You know, I, I, God's good. I, I can definitely use a little bit of money to buy a house outright instead of going back into debt and then blessing people abundantly. I, I, I'll take one-to-one. -one. I know God's going to give us uh, all the resources of heaven uh, to do his work, so I'm not worried about that. Um, airports are being opened, international flights are being opened, things are moving and shaking, guys. It's absolutely fantastic and very, very exciting. Um, uh, if you guys are checking out the news articles on searching for Dinar, uh, again, you can check out thewatchersedge.com. Top right hand corner, there is a links tab, and you can click on searching for Dinar. That's uh, a really good website that posts. Um, um, Strictly news articles, guru free, just interpreted uh, into English, uh, as well as I'm part of the Dinar, um, Dinar Updates Facebook group now. They've invited me there, so um, I'll be looking there as well to get to get some uh, unbiased opinions and some chat, which would be fantastic and hopefully beneficial for this group, this this uh, YouTube group. Um, I haven't done too much looking into cryptocurrencies. Um, it's something that I believe that God's going to be using to bless uh, the saints as well. So, you know, the only coin that seems to be stable right now is Electronium. Thank you, Jesus, for getting me into that one. Uh, if you want to get involved in that, there's a Coinbase link below. Spend 100 bucks and you get $10 free of, uh, of uh, Bitcoin, which kind of uh, offsets any kind of fees and, and then some. Um, also, if you want to support the channel, thewatchersedge.com, uh, don't forget to click the Patreon link below and you can sign up and um, uh, make a contribution donation to the site. All, uh, all funds will be going towards uh, building up the site, paying for my cell phone bill, paying for equipment, um, you know, moving out of my car uh, to making videos. Uh, but if not, that's okay too. I got no problem working out of my car. And if God's going to bless us soon, then, you know, I'm going to keep doing the videos. It'll be all prayer videos. And uh, you know some how-to videos and a lot of a lot of other fun stuff. Uh, I can really engage with you guys at that point because I'll have a lot of time. Um, but until then, it's going to be videos in the car. Um, let's pray it out, Father God. You are amazing. Happy Tuesday, Dad. We give you all the honor and the glory. We are so excited for what's going on, Lord God. I can feel it in the air. It's like an electricity. There's something that you're releasing into the atmosphere. Oh. Father God, I just uh, I just want to prophesy over every single person and say that you guys all have a destiny, a destiny from the Father, and I activate that today as from the authority from given to me as a son adopted into the kingdom of heaven with the authority of my Father given to me as I mature in in His Son Jesus, as I start to get the the attributes of my big brother and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord God, I just activate all of the anointings and blessings in people's lives. Whatever whatever it is that you want me to release, Father, I release it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, I release the spiritual atmosphere around everyone that they would feel your fire and your glory and your presence in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I command all sicknesses to go in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, I, I ask that all giftings be manifest right now in Jesus' name, that they would begin to prophesy as all Christians can prophesy because it comes from you. Not all are called to the, the office of a prophet, but all can prophesy because prophecy comes from your spirit. Lord God, in words of knowledge, let it start coming and let them speak them out in boldness, Lord God, that it not be, you know, go up to someone, hey, I see a pink canoe, you know, let them speak those things because that pink canoe can change a life. Uh, those words that seem strange to us are profound to others because they're words from you to to the uh, your children, to the saints, Father. So I ask that you'd gather up those who are lost, Lord God, and bless each and every one of them and return them to your fold. And Lord God, I thank you so much that the church 
You come to a church full of, you know, addicts, Lord God, and fornicators and all that stuff. And I can just, yeah, you know, I, you gave this this vision to, um, I forget what the pastor's name is, but he saw a church and they were having sex on the pulpit and dealing drugs and all this. And he went to go stop. And God said, but you, you said you wanted me to bring you the, the poor. You wanted me to bring you the sick. And he said, not like this. And he says, well, this is what it looks like. This is what I came for. If you put put those people away from my church, you're no better than the Pharisees. You know, it, it, and we don't want to do that. You know, people are going to sin and it's not about us, you know, getting rid of the sin. It's about us loving and the Holy Spirit gets rid of the sin. He convicts. And that's awesome. That makes things easy for us, guys. So I just pray that you, we get the boldness to love, to love, 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 love in Jesus mighty name. Guys, stay warm. Happy Tuesday. And thanks for walking to the edge. Montserrat Radio is proud to present Divine Intel RV with Benny, following God's promises for humanity. And now your host, Benny Wilson. Good afternoon. Welcome to Divine Intel. This is your host, your friend, and your brother, Mr. B. And uh, let me turn this off because I don't wanna, I don't wanna have any audio problems, and I just did. Okay, good. Now we ready to go. Today it is 2:15 p.m. Pacific time. That's in Los Angeles, California, and 5:16. Probably in the East Time area. Um, I was supposed to have a preacher, a minister, a pastor, a church leader in every single day for the week that I dedicated to my Lord. I dedicated to Israel the whole week and I still dedicated the whole week because I follow what he asked me to. Blindly, without knowing the mystery, Without knowing anything, I just go for what I hear, what I believe, and I'm loyal. I'm loyal. Therefore, I will do the same thing because today I was supposed to have not one, but two ministers, two preachers. And all of a sudden, it just didn't happen. And I totally understand because when God provides, it's because He provides. And sometimes God talks to you in a way that letting you know, no, Benny, I don't want no minister. I want you to say it. And, and now it's, He's leaving me by myself. So why would He want me to say it? And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And I'm saying to myself, well, I used to hate Israel. I used to hate that she, the Jews. Who better they mean than talk about Israel? So, I will do my prayer to Israel. But before that, I got to do my testimony. My testimony comes back when I used to work for banks. Jews actually have control of the whole media, Hollywood, and the banking industry. Jews have the uh, ability to change the destiny of a country like that. Like that. Um, the elite has about half of them are Jews and I'm talking about the old elite the new elite has about seven of them Jews there are, there are already 80 members of the new elite seven of them are Jews they are non lethal members Meaning that uh, they have a different agenda than the old elite. 
But the new elite, most of them are Jews. They are Zionists. They are people that uh, they have a different agenda, totally different than the agenda of the new elite. So back home, when I used to be in the bank industry, I met those people talking about the old elite. I met it through my main contact that I met back in First and State Bank, a bank that is no longer around in California. Um, and he introduced me to this very interesting people. These very interesting people show me the real side. Many of them were really racist and many of them were really evil. They were the type of uh, Jews that uh, did, not want to, did not want to have anybody else praising God at all. Praising Jew, Jesus, praising Christians or Catholics, nothing. They were wanted to actually become and follow the agenda, which the agenda is basically to, be, to have a one religion, a one religion to the whole world. That's the number, the number one agenda. And the reason why they want to bring the one religion is because of control, just like they control us with currencies. If they can control currencies, and they can manipulate currencies, if they can manipulate the money, your money, they can manipulate the laws, they can manipulate easily politicians, they can manipulate everything they want. But the problem is, it started... When they, when we elected Donald Trump, I want you to understand why I changed to be a ex-banker who did not want to even believe a thing that this was has to do anything with God and become a newborn. I need you to put yourself in the same shoes that I was wearing back then. Because I knew who was in control. And I knew what was their agenda. So, when I found out about Donald Trump running, I knew back then that he was going to lose. Because the elite wanted to want him out of it. You know, they really wanted him out of it. And I know for a fact that they control it electronically the whole electoral process. That's why they've been electing puppets left and right. That's why they brought us and sold us Obama. They sold us Obama coming from a so-called black guy, coming from a white woman, and he was not even American. The whole process of electing these men out of nothing because the guy came out out of nothing nobody knew about Obama at all and we still don't know as a matter of fact there is no such a proof that he ever even went to college or university there are very little proof up there okay even his wife there is no such a proof of her being a child pictures etc 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 and this is what the media want to shut up because if they know actually the truth, everybody will scream in the air and say, my God, what exactly is going on? They will all see that the whole process of bringing Obama was a satanic ritual. Because the war we are having right now is a spiritual war between bad and good, between God against evil. And... So they, brought, so they brought Obama, and good luck with that. We never, we never actually saw any change. And uh, But before he, they brought him up, I just knew that he was going to win. Okay? I, 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 I mean, I, I just knew that he was not going to win. I'm sorry. Let me take that back. I, was, I just knew that he was not going to win. But... Uh, Somebody, and I remember his name, his name is Roy, somebody brought me for the first time King Clement prophecy. And what I noticed was that he actually 
prophesied Donald Trump 2007, back in 2007. So I knew back in 1995 that because when they signed the, the, the agreement, because, you know, the new elite, the new elite back in 1995, they brought an agreement to bring, to bring, uh, to bring the Sara, to bring all the changes, right? Because they had to give up. It was an agreement between uh, between elites. So they signed the agreement and nothing happened. So they came back in, back, in, back in 1986. They came back in 1986 and they told the president back then that um, they decided to bring someone. They decided to bring someone on the board, basically on board, and have them win. So the old elite said, yeah, I'm going to let him win, but that was not the case. The new elite knew that they were not going to let him win, meaning Donald Trump. That was the choice. So when he won, when I saw, when I saw the King Clement prophecy, it made me thinking. It made me realize, would this really be for real? Would this be actually happening that these people actually prophesizing number one they already knew that Donald Trump was chosen back in 1986 and now they say he was going to be the president and I know that they're not going to let him win I knew that they were not going to let him win especially with all the Latinos against him and you know the whole thing and then I heard Mark Taylor and then I heard a lot of the prophets saying the same thing years basically before he even wanted to run. That's when I started to think and I said, my God, could he really do such a miracle? So when he won, I became a believer. When he won, I knew that God was in control. When he won, I knew that the establishment inside Israel was about to collapse. Netanyahu is a man of God. Maybe you may not be agree with me, or maybe you are not, or are you agree with me? I don't know. But let me just put it this way. They told me why they want to put him away, and it called my attention why they wanted to actually take him away. They either wanted to take him away by, you know, bringing all this corruption, corruption uh, allegations against them, or basically kill him. He wouldn't be not the first one to, you know, the first leader of Israel to be killed. They already killed somebody else. So they wanted to put him away, and the reason why they wanted to put him away is because the agenda of the all elite is to separate Israel between Palestine and Israel. They want to cut him off in half. Okay? And God doesn't want that. God does not, does not want that. So that's why they wanted to pull him away. And now we are seeing that Donald Trump is going to fly over Israel to make it official for Jerusalem to be the capital of Israel. I don't really quite understand the mystery behind Israel. But I understand one thing. Whether I'm wrong or right, because I literally don't know nothing about the Bible, and I just follow my faith, I'm loyal to my Lord. If my Lord wants me to pray for Israel, I will pray for Israel. I don't ask why God. I don't ask. But look, all these people were Jewish. They're corrupt Jews. Why do you want me to pray for the corrupt? Because I know his answer. I know his answer. His answer will be, Why have I chose you? So... If he can save me from that part of the world, a different world, corrupt world, 
He can save anybody. He can save anybody. He can choose anybody he wants to. That's why I pray for Israel. Without questioning nothing. Without doubting anything. I follow my faith. Because faith is the most strong tool for us to have this blessing in our hands. Nothing else. Faith. You either have faith or you either have hope. You see, hope is basically hope for the better. You know, it's basically hope is not nothing about faith. It's hope is basically, this is the way I see hope. Okay, let me just tell you the way I see hope. Hope is Expect the better from evil. That's what I feel. When they sold hope and they put Obama and underneath said hope, guess what I saw? I saw that. I saw hope for the better from evil. That's what I saw. And I saw his face and I saw evil. I saw the devil. Okay? And I wasn't wrong. I was not wrong. That's the reason why many of my people in my personal account attack me. That's why I'm the sellout. That's why I'm the coon. That's why I'm the racist. That's what I am basically everything. The worst. Because I told them they want to sell out the hope. They don't want to sell us the truth. They don't want to sell us the faith. Obama was that, the deception. Because if you expect the better of the evil, you get deception. Because the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You see, you cannot convince me that this fat ass president in North Korea, all of a sudden he will turn around and say, okay, I'm going to give up all my nuclear Nuclear warheads and all these threats that I did to the satanic United States all of a sudden because I gave up. I don't think so. The devil is a liar. And just watch how this event is going to turn so ugly. So ugly. People will ask, well, wait a minute, didn't you just say that you want to give up all your nuclear warheads? Watch. Mark my words. I don't believe no Korea. At all. The devil is a liar. He is a liar. And you know why I believe he's a liar? Because King Clement, in the spirit of God, described him as a pig. He described him as a pig. God himself described him as a pig. Look around. Look at the prophecies around North Korea. And you'll see what I'm talking about. You and Mark Taylor said it. So no, I do not believe about he giving up his weapons. At all. He's a liar. Just like the devil is a liar. Alright? So, wait. Because we are about to see prophecy in the making. Wait. Because I'm going to give you the choices whether to choose to fairy tales or choose to the truth. My show today is the second day dedicated to Israel, to the apple of the eye of my Lord and Savior. And also the topic is choices, choices. Choices, choices. What is your choice today? Are you gonna are you gonna believe the gurus? Or are you gonna believe my Lord? Are you gonna believe from the satanic? Are you gonna hope for the better from the from the same devil, just like we hope from Obama? Or are you gonna bring your faith and the only faith and the only truth that is Yeshua Hamashiach? That's the question I wanna ask you. 
And I got the proof for you. Be ready. Because you're going to be shocked one more time. You're going to be shocked one more time. Be ready. So before I do that, I got to bring up the best of my abilities. A humble prayer for the land of Israel. So please... Join me into this prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, you are so awesome, my Lord. I cannot describe you, my Lord, what you've done to me. I cannot describe the mysteries that you bring. You go beyond my imagination. It's so wonderful and so awesome what you're doing that only I can see it myself and I cannot even describe it. I cannot even tell my people what I see because there's no words. How can I explain to my people? What is that? You turn something and you left something so bad and all of a sudden you turn it around so beautiful. And you turn it around and say, no, that's the way I don't want it to be. This is the way it's going to be. And you just made it. You just pulled the trigger and changed everything. That's what it makes you so awesome. My Lord, this is your show. I want you to take over. I want you to lead my people, my Lord. I want you to tell my, my, my people to look for you. I dedicate this, this week to your land, my Lord, to Israel. Thank you for letting me see your light. Say, thank you for letting me see the truth. Thank you for humbling me. Thank you for taking away the stuff that used to really bother me. But thank you so much for the hope, the real hope, that only start with you. Thank you for giving me the light of faith. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my mother. Thank you for the things that I don't have no control. Thank you for the things that I can control. Thank you for the choices that I'm about to give my people. I choose you, my Lord. So therefore, I pray for Israel. I pray for your superior, supernatural protection against that land. I pray for Netanyahu and his anointment. You know you care for him. I pray for his protection. I pray for the people in Israel. I pray for all those religions, everyone. I pray for the Zionists because you even ask me, we need to pray for the enemy. I pray for him too. I pray for all those Zionists. I pray for the, for the anointed, for everyone. Because you said that the only one that has control over this is you. So I pray for Israel, my Lord. And I want you to bless Israel. Because we know that the best cures, the best cure for diabetes, cancer, and most of the most terrible diseases and illnesses will come from Israel. You told me that. I pray for that, for that land. And everything that is in there. I pray for their safety against their enemies. Against Iran. Against Turkey. Against China. Against Russia. Against Syria. Against every single enemy around them. I pray for they not being able to be touched by the evil and by the enemies. 
I pray for your life, my Lord. I pray for the apple of your eyes. I don't know and I don't want to know the mystery, my Lord. If you ask me to pray for them, I will pray for them. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this gathering. I want to thank you humbly. In the my name, in your name, my Lord, of your only Son, our Savior, our light, our love, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, thank you guys. I did a small prayer, a humble prayer, and whether I put a vibration this cell phone or not, I was I always gonna be bothered with a lot of messages. So you can probably you were you heard about it. But anyway, we're gonna continue with the show. And now we're going to talk about prophecies, okay? We're going to talk about how and why I stand for what I stand, okay? But before I do that, I got to make a disclaimer. And the disclaimer is this. I'm not a professional advisor, financial advisor. This show is for entertainment, entertainment purposes only. Uh, I'm talking to a microphone. I really don't see anybody that I know. On the other side, and you are—I—I I expect that you are an adult, and you can do your own litigations or your own litigation, your own research in the matter, and therefore, you've been warned. So now that I covered my butt, I want to talk to you about what's going to happen. As you know. For those who are listening to me in YouTube, in YouTube, um, I've been I've been attacked for many many reasons. They, they that's the reason why they say that I got nothing of, you know, they say that I got nothing of intelligence or intel, and because I repeat the same thing. Okay, that's fine. I repeat the same thing about bringing people to God. That's fine. I'm not. I'm not for their approval at all. I don't care. So, a lot of you have been sending me a video. Uh, they either sending me the video that basically is old, it's very old, and I was gonna show that video, the original video, I was gonna show the original video with the, uh, in the interview that was done to a guy that his name is um, Lindsay let me see what his name is Lindsay Williams yes his name is Lindsay Williams uh, back in uh, I think it was the beginning of the year he made a interview coast to coast and a radio show that's a terrestrial radio show I listened to that show in the beginning and according to mr. Lindsay uh, according to Mr. William, he said that the elite have changed their they changed their mind about collapsing the financial system. That's what he said. Um, so I'm gonna do just gonna review that uh, one more time. I'm gonna play the audio for you to listen to it because my friend, a very very dear friend of mine, he sent me that. He said, "Benny, I think you're wrong." No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. He didn't listen to my show last time, and the reason why I believe that this is not going to happen, because I got proof of that, okay? So, let me just play the audio, and I'm going to stop it right in, the, right in the moment that he said that there will be no financial crash, okay? But before I play the audio, i got to make sure that you understand one thing. Well, two things, Okay? Two things. Watch, watch what I'm saying because I'm gonna be very, very controversial. What, what I'm about to say. If you're offended by it, I'm sorry, but that's how it is. I'm bold. Okay. All right. So the first thing is, the devil is a liar. Please understand that the devil is a liar. Okay. 
The, same th the second thing is, God told me just about 10 minutes ago that the devil always dressed as an angel. That's what he told me. The devil always dressed as an angel. So, grab those two informations, okay? And now, let me give you the third confirmation. As an ex-elite contact, we have a lot of secret agents that pretend to have a lot of information, and they don't. They Basically, they have been taking care of it, and what they do is basically mislead you, okay? They mislead you to... To tell you that it's not going to happen, but in reality, it's going to happen because that the like I've been telling you, the elite has a well-known saying, and that's a, that's basically how they lead themselves: is do not do not listen what I said, do what I do. That's why they do it. Okay. So let me just play the audio. Now that you understand what my point of view, what my point of view is, let me play the audio, and after you listen to it, I will bring my proof. Okay. All right. Need to look at that. You all need to look at that. Because God said, let me see, where is it at? I could play it for you. Let me tell you what, I, I can tell you what God said about where, it's, no, listen. Listen to what the elite said, and then I'll show you what God said. Here we go. Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I've got Lindsey Williams on the phone with me today. He served as a missionary on the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline for some three years. He became friends with some of the elite that ruled the world, and occasionally he comes out with DVDs telling what their plans are. As a matter of fact, he's got a new DVD out that we are offering called A Panic is Planned, and the topics are How Long Before the Panic, The Elite Agenda Update, Stock market expectations, Bitcoin, what my elite says, Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, and insider tells the true financial news, more panic up, and another health miracle. So, Lindsey Williams, welcome back to the Prophecy Club, brother. Stan, what a privilege to be with you today. It has been at least four years, maybe longer, since I had the opportunity to be on the Prophecy Club. Uh, thank you for letting me be back. Oh, well, it's a privilege having you back, brother. And I hope your health is strong enough to where you can come back again more often. I know this is a real sacrifice for you to come on, so thank you very much. Well, I had to break my silence, Stan. I really had no choice. You know, you finally get to the place that you your heart goes out to people when they're floundering around out there not having the slightest idea of what's going on. They're wondering. They're at their wit's end. And... I finally said, I know what's going to happen. I know what the elite's agenda is. And I said, I have no choice. I've got to get out there and tell people. So since it's been so long since I've had an opportunity to be with you, let me give some brief, brief background because I'm sure there are many, many listeners that will not remember four years back when I was with you last. By the providence of God, I had the opportunity to be asked and invited to be the chaplain to the elite of the world. This was back 39 years ago during the construction phase of the Trans-Alaska Oil Pipeline. And for three years' time, I lived with the people whom you only hear about and never get an opportunity to know. It could have never happened any other way. But what I heard and saw and the things I lived during those three years changed my life. I sat across the dinner table from them. I was in their board meetings. I heard what they were saying. I heard men talk about controlling nations and controlling people and manipulating currencies. And I couldn't believe I was hearing what I was hearing. I said, people can't exist like this. Let me say as emphatically as I possibly can, there positively is a group of people on the face of the earth who control the world. I know. I lived with them for three years' time. I'll never forget one day 
Mr. Ken Fromm. I'll use his name now because he he was one of them, and he, four years ago he passed away. I was in the vehicle there at crude oil up on the big, uh, big oil field in northern Alaska, and we were riding in the vehicle one day. We came across a group of men working on the side of the road. They were either Greenpeace or Sierra Club. I don't know exactly which. And I looked over at Ken, and I said, Ken, these people are literally costing you millions of dollars extra in building this pipeline. I said, doesn't it bother you? And he looked back at me with a big smile on his face, and he said, Chaplain, they don't bother us at all. And I said, after all the millions they're costing you? He said, you see, Chaplain, we give millions of dollars to Greenpeace every year. He said, Atlantic Richfield gives millions of dollars to, to the Sierra Club every year. Uh, he said, these people don't do anything except what we allow them to do. And he said, you know, it looks good for us, for them to be up here, because it makes people think that we really care. And he said, we do. We care about the ecology. But he said, they don't do anything except what we allow them to do. And he said, he said Chaplain, <clears throat> it's the same thing with the Democrats and the Republicans. He said, we give millions of dollars to the Democratic Party. We give millions of dollars to the Republican Party. It really doesn't matter with us which president gets in. He said, we still get our way either way. Well, they did up until the election of 2016 and the inauguration of 2017. And now we're into 2018. Up until that time, they did. They got their way with every single president. And then he said something that it still resounds in my ears until yet. He said, Chaplain, the congressman. He said, almost, he didn't say 100%. But he said, almost every person in Congress has their price. And he said, we know what their price is. So he said, they don't do anything except what we are willing for them to do and want them to do. i never forget one night I had been rubbing shoulders with these people all day long. I went back to my dorm room over at Pump Station 1 and I lay down the bed and looked up at the ceiling, and I literally cried out to God. And I said, oh, God, how can there be such dastardly people on the face of this earth who by intention control nations, manipulate people and currencies? And I said, how can they possibly exist? Now, keep in mind that prior to my experience of living with these people for three years, I had been a pastor for 12 years myself of the same church. I was brought up in a wonderful Christian home with godly parents. And to be thrown into the midst of such evil people uh, as the elite, I could hardly believe <clears throat> what I was seeing and what I heard. During those three years, I had the privilege of making rather close friends with two of those people. And I've kept in touch with them for 39 years and have been able to uh, learn things that nobody else knew. And every time that the elite would tell me something, I would tell the world. And as a result, people said, you're a prophet. And I said, no, I'm not. I just happen to know the people that are doing it because nothing ever happens by chance. Exactly nothing. Government finances, stock market, I care not what it is. Even foreign countries, nothing ever happens by chance. It always happens by design plan. And these people know in advance what they're going to do. And one of their, uh, should I say, facets of life, one of the things that they always do is they will always tell people what they're going to do prior to them doing it. And if you know how to listen to what they're saying, you'll be able to know in advance what the elite are planning on doing. I call them the elite. Now, I'd like to come down, if I may, at this point to 2018. Skip over those 39 years and all of the predictions they made and how they came to pass just exactly like they said it. They're human beings. They don't always get their way. 
but most of the time they do. So I'll say that every now and then they made a mistake, but very few. But they have really made a big one now. Uh, prior to the election of 2016, I had been told everything that was going to happen. Um, in fact, I told the world exactly what was going to happen, and I myself was preparing myself and had told my friends to prepare for the inevitable because they had said that it positively was an impossibility for Donald Trump to win the election. They said it can't happen. I had been told this prior to the election. He said it, it can't happen. He said everything is in our favor. He said Soros, and he did say this. He said Soros has built the voting machines. He didn't say that they were rigged. They wouldn't go quite that far over the telephone or on an email. But he said Soros built the machines. And then, of course, just recently, with all the indictments that have been made, you and I are quite aware of the fact that they were manipulating everything imaginable. And so they said it is a total impossibility. It cannot happen. And they said, we are ready to bring in our new world order in its entirety. They were right on the verge. They had everything planned. They knew just how to do it. Within three to four months, they had planned a financial, I'm not going to call it a, uh, a 1929 uh, I'm not going to use the word bubble. They had planned within three to four months after the election a financial something, disaster, uh, fiasco or something that would give them the opportunity to bring under control exactly what they wanted to be able to bring, do everything they wanted to do, and be very glad that things turned out the way they did because if they had not, you and I today would be in the midst of one of the greatest financial disasters. It, we, we've never seen anything like what they had planned, and I was told all about it. But something happened. I'll never forget it. The election took place. Uh, Trump finally admitted that he had won. And within a few hours after he announced that he had won the election, I received an email. Now, I hope you have pencil and paper today because some of the things you're going to hear, you go back and put it all together. The puzzle will fit perfectly for you. And within a few hours after that election, I received an email from my elite friend, and it said two things, two words. It, it stood out like a light. This is all he had to say, and I could read everything in between the lines. It said, God intervened. That's it. That's, that's all he had to say. The elite don't want to encounter God, but sometimes they can't help themselves. And when Donald Trump was elected, the course of history was altered. I hope you caught those words. Literally the course of history. It set the new world order back. In my estimation, my elite friend didn't give the dates, but in my estimation from what I hear from them, it set the new world order back somewhere between 20 and 25 years when Donald Trump was elected president of the United States of America. And the plans that they had within three to four months after the election had to be completely altered and after I received that email, it was weeks, and I could get no reply out of my elite friend whatsoever. Nothing. He would say nothing. Wouldn't answer emails, wouldn't talk to me, wouldn't have a thing in the world to do with me. And a number of weeks later, I had a contact. Finally, uh, I, I said, oh, so good. But what I heard was not necessarily what I wanted to hear. He gave me the new agenda. You see, the elite had to completely alter their plans from beginning to end, and they set a new agenda for all of the future events that they wanted to do, and they had to alter so many things. For instance, let me give you one that you very readily recognize. You remember that President Bush was convinced that the – banks of the world and the elite of the world had to have money. 
And he initiated quantitative easing one, then quantitative easing two, and literally gave the elite and the bankers of the world billions and billions of dollars. It never came down to the average person on the street. It was always just what the elite got. And you know that you you did not receive the benefits from it. Well, when Donald Trump was elected, he had promised to drain the swamp. He had made it very plain. And they didn't have anything to worry about because they knew he was not going to become president. It was a given. It could not happen. So when he was elected and it finally was admitted that he did win, the elite were forced into changing their agenda, and they knew that Donald Trump would not bail them out if they had another financial collapse or a crash or even a, a big bubble burst. So I'm going to make a statement here that uh, you will remember for the, for the next seven years, and, and you'll watch it happen time after time, and you'll probably say I'm a prophet, but no, I'm not. It was just what was given to me. As long as Donald Trump is in office, there will not be a financial crash. The elite can't afford it. Do you realize how many billions and billions of dollars the elite have in the stock market and in paper themselves, even though they've got their gold and silver to back up on? They've got all of this in paper, and they cannot allow a financial crash during the administration of Donald Trump because he will not initiate another quantitative easing and bail them out, and they know that he would let them lose everything they've got. So as a result, they have an agenda now whereby they are not going to allow any big bubble burst. Oh, yes, I know on Friday we had a stock market that went down 1,100 points, but so what? Okay, you heard it. As long as Donald Trump, according to him, there will be no financial disaster. There will be no financial crash. Because they cannot afford it. Okay, so for my good friend who sent me this video, and for all the people who sent me this video, once again, this is my response. The topic of my show is choices, choices, along with the prayer for Israel. We already talk about Israel and we pray for Israel. And now I'm going to make my choice. I need to make my choice whether I believe this guy, the guy who's been selling DVDs and CDs and a lot of this crap and making himself very rich and follow what I know. So what I know, there are a lot of false agents, people who are alleged to have contact with the elite, just for you to just believe the perception that they're not going to do what they're supposed to do. Whether they do it or they don't want to do it, the financial crash will happen. Why? That's my choice. It's my choice because I'm loyal to prophecy. It's my choice because there have been three prophets confirming the financial collapse. It's my choice because today, and I mean today, Louis Sharp, Prophet Louis Sharp, made it very clear. This is no coincidence. When you people send me the stuff for me to respond to this on my show, it is no coincidence. The Holy Ghost is moving. Because he wants you to know the truth and nothing but the truth. The Holy Ghost is moving in a tremendous way that he will answer to you like that. Listen to the prophetess Louise Sharp. Crash. Hi, I'm Lois Vogel Sharp. I have a warning to put out, a prophetic warning that I got. This is the earliest I could get it out. But um, let everybody see this because um, something's going to be happening soon.
I got this at 1.56 a.m. actually uh, Monday, March 5th, which was yesterday, 2018. So I'm going to be putting this out everywhere because this is a word from God about what's about to happen. And we need to heed what he's saying. I say this out of love once more to warn my people. The crash is imminent and you should prepare for it. Do not ignore what I am telling you to do or you will suffer for it. Take the time and store up some extra food in your pantry. Make sure you have enough to last for a while because as I told you before, the shelves will be bare and you need to gather up extras so you will not be hit so hard by this crash of your economy. I know you have been believing and hearing this for some time now, but I tell you it is time to place the gold and the silver in the hands of my people. This money is not so you could be selfish, but it is to further my kingdom and my truth and to be prepared for the future woes that are coming. Persecution is rising up and they will hate you for my name's sake because I tell them they must repent. I have held back the earthquake, but it will happen and it will shake you awake. Your country is still killing my babies in record numbers, and this brings a stench to my nostrils, for every life is precious to me. For those I love, I tell you to go and gather the food, to last, for again the shelves will be bare. This is necessary as I will reset America, but until this problem of overspending is resolved, the markets will take this hit, and they will drop drastically, creating panic. I will not say what will set this off, but it will shake the markets and my people will receive the gold and the silver increase. They need to do this for my will of preparing for my return. One, two, three, time is up and you will not be able to say I did not warn you. I love you, but I tell you this must happen and my people will be let go by the evil one. For too long they have been slaves to debt and emotional trauma that my foe has created. You took the source of true wealth that was provided for you by me and buried it. The gold and the silver are mine and you threw them away the same way you threw me out of your country. We are both coming back to witness to the world who the father is and who his only son is, Yeshua HaMashiach. One, two, three, time is up, and the bell has just rung. Love your Lord and Savior, Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. What he's saying there is the economy is about to crash, that we pushed the gold and the silver, we went away from the gold and the silver standard, which was what he created, and we kicked it to the curb, and we brought in paper money that is now worthless. This is the year of Jubilee, it's going to be a Shemitah that's about to happen, and the economy is about to take a hit for a reset. This is a reset. God is ordaining this to happen. It doesn't matter how he uses it, what brings it about, he's going to make it come to pass, because the gold and the silver have to rise up. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It's coming into our hands to prepare for the end time scenario that is eminently waiting to come to pass too. All the woes and the earthquakes and the volcanic eruptions and the tsunamis, these things will happen. And we will be going to safe havens. Whether you believe it or not, things are going to happen. So keep this in prayer. Those of you that have no money and you're, you're down and out and it's hard for you to get money ahead of time and, and, and put things in storage, Trust in the Lord. He'll take care of you. All right? I don't have all this money in the world either. I've been poor my whole life. I know what it is not to be able to do some things that you feel necessary. But God is with you and he will make the way. So just trust in the Father. He says this is going to happen, so it will happen. That's all I have to say. This has to get out. I'm Lois Vogel Sharp and um, I'll be back again. I have another video we're going to be doing about using the name of Jesus that was given to us that we don't use anymore, barely. It's a whole other video on he the healing process that we're in. So I love you and have a blessed day and do whatever you can do to get some extra stuff in your house because this is about to happen very, very soon. God bless you.
Okay. Thank you, it's done. Yes, I'm sorry. I lost the audio myself. Okay, so. There you go. That was published today. They were asking about what well, well, was published. It was published today, March 6, 2018. Coincidence? In the spiritual world, there is no coincidence. There is no coincidence. God is speaking to his people. You. Speaking to me, speaking to you. Whether they decided to crush it or not, the machine is going down. Whether they like it or not, whether anybody can tell me, no, Benny, you know what? It's not going to crash. The machine is going down. It's going down because it's going down. What part of reset you don't want to understand that is your problem, not mine. Reset means delete everything and start all over again. What did they erase? They erased the gold. The only true reason that will give you a value to your dollar, to your peso, to your currency, whenever you are, they delete that. And now it's coming back after the reset. Got it? We need to have a crash because like King Clement said it, God will put us in our knees before he lift us up again. That's what God says through his prophet King Clement. So if we have to go back to our knees again, people will start saying, we're back in the big depression, we're back in the 1920s. That's what the prophecy says, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Why then they're going to let it go down? Because God is destroying everything of what the elite been doing it for many, many years. Okay? That's why. So whether they like it or not, whether you like it or not, do you really think I really like the idea that the whole collapse will actually happen? And millions and millions of people will lose their jobs? Do you really think I'm that idiot? No, I don't. It is not up to me. It's up to him. If he wants to erase corruption, the hard way he will do it. Just like the, the Tower of Babel. When they try to reach the sky, when they try to reach God and make them feel so good and so good about themselves that they feel like gods. God came over and confused them and destroyed that tower. What do you think that elite think about themselves? They believe they're gods, believe it or not. They believe in that they are gods, believe it or not. I'm not joking about it. They believe they are gods, believe it or not. So, God is going to come over and is going to destroy the whole system. Make you understand that the only one who has control is Him and Him only. And when He does that, there will be a reset. Within the reset will be corruptions. They're going to bring the goal, the goal back. The goal back standard. And your paper money will be considered the new goal. That is why the dinar will revalue. That is why the dong will revalue. That is why your miraculously Zimbabwe bond will have a kind of a value. Only when we bring back gold. Not before, not after the seven. No. No. Once again, call me back, please, and let me know the 800 number. Please, 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 okay? Let me know what happened all this day, because as far as I know, yesterday was the first day of RB. Today, we got the 6 
Where are the 800 numbers, Judy? Where are they? And as far as I know, on the seven, all of it is supposed to go in exchange. Good luck. Congratulations. You are rich. Feel the rich. Good luck. And there's people who still believe them. I cannot bring you the truth unless I destroy the lie. So you might like not, you may not like even like me because I keep bringing those gurus. But I, this is the reason why I do it. I do it because I need to bring that truth. In order to bring that truth and implement that truth, I need, I need to destroy the lies, the false informations, the false gurus, the false bullcrap. That is why I bring it all the time. So you understand because look, it's been already 12 years. And people already lost the sense of knowing who's telling you the truth or in telling you the lies. You tell me if I'm not right. Tell me if I'm wrong. A lot of people just lost the logic of knowing and differentiate between fairy tales and reality. You tell me if I'm wrong. Come on, tell me. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm not, I'm not trying to be the only guy who, who is right. No, I'm not. But I can tell you one thing. People are insane, man. People are insane that you're going to be rich tomorrow with nothing to back it up. Are you serious? <laughs> are you good in your brain? Is your greedy that hard? That your greedy that big that you just lost of your sense of of intelligence that's why because your greed is so big that you just lost any type of sense of logic that's what it is that's what it is people have become so greedy in this process you don't want to even hear about God you don't even really want to hear about the plans of my Lord you don't want to even hear people like me telling you, go and repent, repent, come back to the kingdom of God, repent. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They only want to hear how fake they're going to be with trillions of Zimbabwe's. Ah! That's the way it is. You tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. The same people who pray the calls, the same people who are praying to God, all of the sudden and the eternal, we are going to be so rich, seven times, seven times, eleven times, I just received, a, I just received a, a publication. Let me tell you what happened. I just received a, a, a publication. I'm not attacking him because he's my brother, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. He sent me a publication. It comes from investment.com all right I'm gonna publish it it comes by investment.com within that website investing.com is called investing.com and it's and it shows the rate of USD against the Iraqi dinar and he said it to me he said Benny look 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 and I took a look at it. it's 1174 Brother, you are so blind that you think you just discover gold. And I mentioned your name, but you know who you are. Okay? 1174 is the rate, the value. Take a look on the, not on your phone, take a look on the website. 1174 is the devaluation that went down the dinar. It went so bad. Down that is 1174 less. It's not say 1174 revalue. No, it's 1174 less. That's the truth. You see what I'm talking about? We have lost all type of logic. We have lost all type of uh, logic sense. Logic sense. To differentiate between the truth and the lie. 
This is the reason why we got even people who are less to say they're pastors and they're less to say the connection with the elite and they're less to say that, oh, they just change their mind. They're not going to crush the whole thing. I don't care if it is true or not true. What I'm saying is this. If God wants to collect, co collide it and basically destroy the whole system, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let bring the United States to their knees, let it be, let it be. Let it bring down, let the whole machine down, let the whole book right go down, let it go down, let it go down, let it go down. Because all their ways, it means nothing. It means nothing your fairy tales are going to the bank and exchange. It means nothing if well, your millions or trillions of dollars that you might have in your hands. It means nothing, people. Nothing. Nothing. So now you have the warning from God. Grab all the food that you can get. Grab all the money you can get. I've been telling you. Grab all your money you can get, a list that will actually help you in about two weeks. Many of you are actually depending on check by check. Do something. God is warning you. Grab all the foods you can. Just grab it. Grab all the water you can. There will be a lot of chaos on the street. There will be a lot of chaos. There will be panic. Even she said it. There will be panic. Do whatever you can to survive while the correction is made. Nobody knows how long the correction will take. We need to be in the song when the prophecy said that when things seem to be at the worst, I will come forward. That's the God. That's the living God telling you when the RB will happen. We need to be in the middle when things go as the world, when things are the worst. Then we will see the revaluation. Not before. Nope. Now they're promoting another day, March 11. Nothing's going to happen March 11. <laughs> you know what I love about? Because I'm destroying the lies. Nothing's going to happen March 11. Okay? Nothing. I keep destroying their bullcrap. That's why they hate me. I keep destroying all those private exchanges. I keep destroying all those those uh, fund releasings. I keep destroying about every single retard out there who's telling you that you're going to have your 800 number. I keep destroying it. Okay? Because if I want to bring up the kingdom of God, the living God, I need to bring up the false, the, the false gods, the false anointed people, the dragon family, the elders, the grandfathers, those people. I need to bring it up and reveal their faces. The evil, the enemy of God, Learn. Even this sinner telling you. Read the Bible. The dragon is the enemy of God. Learn. I made my choice. Whether I'm wrong. Or whether I'm right. I made my choice. I follow the prophecy of God. So regardless if they say wanted to do it, no, that is not how God wants it. God is talking to his people. God is talking to his prophets. Uh, God has talked to King Clement, to Mark Taylor, to, to, to Louis Sharp, and any other prophet, even to Lana Bowser. Every single prophet that we've been following has been saying the same thing. So no, thank you. It's time up. Remember Emma Watson? Yesterday during the uh, Oscars. Emma Watson showed up with a stupid tattoo. And the whole media went crazy because it was her grammatic letters. It has tremendous errors 
But everybody understood the message. And what was the message? Times is up. Time is up. What was the message? What was the subliminal message? Who did she who did she actually why did they chose her? Do you know who Emma Watson is? She's also an actress and a very, very evil feminist. Yes, I call her evil. She's a very evil feminist. Okay? And she broke times is up. What the subliminal message is coming from the elite? Time is up, meaning they ran out of time. Meaning that's it for them. Are you going to tell me that I'm going to get something really, really, really positive in Hollywood? The big brainwashing machine, the same brainwashing machine that is promoting movies to entertain you in the same way brainwashing you out of a movie called The Black Panthers? The Black Panther. I went to see the movie. Oh yes, I went to see the movie. And what I got to tell you, you're not going to like it. <laughs> you're not going to like it. That movie is filled with subliminal message like you have no idea. And now I understand why many, I wonder, now I know why many of you, my brothers and sisters, are so glad that they watched that movie. Because it's delightful. It's beautiful. It brought you back to your culture. You know, the African culture. You see these beautiful people, these beautiful colors, this beautiful scene all been up by computers out of this fake country and fake technology, basically extraterrestrial technology that can actually cure everything in the whole thing. And the king, the Black Panther was the man, the, the, basically the king of the kingdom. And his mission was to restore and basically protect the technology and not be able to give it and, and, and stop the suffering from the black people, the black people in the real world. And that is a subliminal message. So you might get, uh, oh, this is a positive message. No, it's not. It's not. Hello. Wake up. It's not. Guess why? Who was, how many Black Panthers he shows in the movie? Two. The King and the Black Panther from the United States. Remember that? And what was the ultimate fight between the King, the old uh, Panther, and the United States Panther? And what did he kill? He killed the Bad Panther from the United States Panther. And what was the subliminal message after they got basically wounded in the heart? He said, I'd rather die than be in bondage. That's another subliminal message. It's filled with subliminal messages, people. And trust me, if I had to go through the whole movie again, and I keep decoding every single message from that movie, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked, people. You'll be shocked, my brothers and sisters. I've been telling every single one, if you only knew your history, you will start feeling like a slave. You will start feeling like you've been discriminated. You don't know how beautiful and royalty your history is. I know it, and I'm Latino. But why would you even praise a actor coming from a fake history? You know why? If you want to praise heroes, why don't you praise that man in Skid Row that every single morning he wake up and try to find out food and medicine for the people in the streets. He's black. If you run, if you want to praise black people, why don't you look for the first minister, pastor, or even anybody in your streets, in your city, and praise him? Why do you have to praise an actor who was paid to do something that was fake, coming from a fake character, and feel proud of it? I don't understand. Why? 
Do you see no? You you see you don't you don't see how they want to manipulate your emotions? That is called manipulation of emotions. That is called manipulation of emotions. They like they love to manipulate your emotions because you they know that we all manipulate with emotion. We're emotional people. That's the reason how they manipulate Obama. Remember when Obama came out in, into the scene? Oh, they feel so proud. Everybody was crying. Oh, finally, we got a black president. Ah, emotions. What it came after that? Deception. What did Obama do for black people? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. But why? Because they love to manipulate our emotions. They love it. They just love it. They just gave a lot of Oscars to a Mexican director. Do you really think that I feel proud about him? Knowing that Hollywood continuously discriminate Latinos in their area. They just made a movie called Gringo. I posted on my Facebook page. Not one is Mexican. Do you know who the only one is Mexican? The criminals. The cartel criminals. We don't even know their names. Do you really expect me that I'm going to be feeling proud of an idiot working for the elite? And they decided we're going to give you four or five Oscars so Mexican people feel, uh, feel that we don't discriminate their asses. Do you really think I'm going to be feeling so proud? No. Because that's a manipulation of emotions. They want to give us little, you know, just little taste of what it is. But they're going to continue taking it out out of their sin. For your information, the Black Panther is not the first black character. It's not the first hero character. One before him was called the Swamp. And guess what? It was the best black character and hero. Even the story is beautiful. He went to hell. And he told the devil, I'm going to go against you. And the devil kicked him out of the hell. And he brought all this power from hell to fight the evil. Did they bring him back? No. You know why? Because they knew they screwed up. They don't want nobody to fight against the evil. They don't want no black men to fight against the evil. Now you tell me that he reserved some, some praise. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead. Do you see what I'm talking about? There's some black men that was a play as a character. A black character, okay? A black hero. Went to hell. Came out of the hell. And used his superpowers to fight the evil, the devil himself. Why they never brought him back? Because they don't like that. Do you see what I'm talking about? You see what I'm talking about? You need to understand the subliminal message from the devil. And their plan and their agenda. That's how they manipulate your emotions and they, how they manipulate your brain. They brainwashing you. You might say, man, you're full of crap, man. It's just a movie. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's just a movie, right? Okay, go ahead. Keep watching. You'll see how you lost reality. Or any, you're going to lose sense of reality. Watch. Watch what I'm telling you. You're going to lose every single sense of reality. If they can sell you this guy as a superhero, they can sell you the Antichrist. Mark my words. They can sell you the Antichrist like this. All right? That's my opinion. And I hope that you learn something from this. That's my choice. I don't know about your choice. If I was you, I, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all the food I can. I hate to actually grab uh, canned food, but I will do it. 
you know, and I'm going to take care of my finances. I'm going to make sure that they're not in the bank because I'm not going to be able to go and grab my, uh, money from the ATM. All of them are going to be cr uh, crashed. All of them are going to be closed. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know about you. Okay? And why? Because I believe in prophecy. That's why. Paul Foxworth says, Crack in the eggs into a bowl. Eggs can be frozen in the shell. Remove all the small pieces of shell that had fallen in the bowl. Freeze the entire egg. Beat the eggs until mixed throughout. Oh, I don't know what the heck is this. <laughs> anyway. This is it, guys. The name of the show is called Choices. We pray for Israel. God bless Israel. God bless uh, all my Jewish friends. Because I know I got a lot of Jewish friends that are, um, are listening to my show. Um, God bless your land. I support you. And I will continue praising and I want to continue praying for your land. Because my Lord told me to. And it's your choice, people. Okay? It's your choice. You want to uh, believe the same people who've been lying to you? Or you want to look for the truth and nothing but the truth? Jesus Christ. It's your choice. God is not putting your gun. He respects your free will. So, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, all you got to do is pray and ask them and tell him, My Lord, I believe in you. I believe that you are my Savior. I believe that you died for our sins. I believe that you will be back one day and you're going to judge everybody. And I want to be in heaven with you. That's it. I want to remind you this for the, le the rest of the week. Trust me, for me doing a show every single day is a sacrifice. Big sacrifice. I'm not working right now. I'm not doing my business. So whatever you want to donate, which nobody's putting a gun in your head, I will thank you for it. If you want to go to my Patreon page, go ahead. This will be a, a, a link in my Patreon uh, page for those who are listening in YouTube. And for those who are not and have in my Facebook page, I will also post my Patreon page and also my PayPal link if you wish to donate me. I'm working on your uh, currency classes. Um, and very soon I will start sending emails. Okay? And that's it. Do not send me any email. Do not send me any email because I cannot handle it anymore. Okay? Uh, for those who haven't sent me any email, you got to wait. Wait for my email. Wait for my announcement. I'm sorry. Wait for my announcement, then you can send me your email. Okay? But right now, do not send me anything. Don't send me no private message with your email. Don't send me anything. Don't send me no email. Sending, you, sending me your email, don't send me anything. I will not accept any more emails for my data because I'm too busy. You got to wait. Be patient for the next announcement. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope that you have learned a lot from prophecy and how accurate God is speaking to you and to me. I want to bless you in the name of my Lord Jesus Christ. And I wait for you tomorrow because I'm going to do another sacrifice tomorrow to bring the prayer for the apple of the eyes of my Lord and Savior, Israel. For now, good night and I'll see you then. Thank you for listening to Divine Intel with Benny. God bless you and we'll see you next time.